You don't know how much you put me at risk, how much I'm jeopardizing. Cash Nasty, you know I love you, bro, and I would never put you in a situation to hurt you or to harm you. And I think it's pretty f***ed up that you didn't even say nothing to me, bro. That dude would have swung, bro. Like, I, I would have blacked out. All you had to do was come talk to me, bro, and ask me what was good. It was on phone call, too. We gonna make sure nothing happened to you, bro. I got your back. Everything had bro. I couldn't believe it. Feel backstab. I had no idea what to come to you and speak to you about, bro. You didn't say nothing to me, bro. You took someone's bullshit word. You ran to the internet and you tried to put everything against me just as everyone else has been doing. I'm just not gonna affiliate myself with him no more. You know, I haven't responded to him in three days. You know I'd never do nothing to put you in danger, bro. This is content, man. I didn't hire no one to take you out in life. I just wait on a real apology. You know I fucking love you, bro. All you had to do was come talk to me, bro. Friends, we all have them. And even though they can be annoying, we all know how much they mean. Friends are who you confide in when times get tough. They're who you have your best memories with, and they're the people who are always supposed to have your back. Oftentimes, you trust your friends over anyone else in your life, and many people said friends are their chosen family. There are many ways that friends form, but the most common ways are through a shared bond or experience, such as going to the same school together and being placed next to each other every class, or through a common interest, such as playing basketball at the rec center all the time. Granted, this one really matters if you're winning, or maybe I'm just overly competitive. Bruh. Most dudes can even form friends as easily as just doing a chin up and saying what's up in the hallway every day. Eventually you start dapping each other up, and next thing you know, you guys are friends. However, one of the strongest friendships that two people can form is when the chemistry between the two people starts getting them paid. You can look at any industry where two friends accomplished big business together, and you can just see how strong their bond is. Look at The Rock and Kevin Hart, for example. They're two famous actors who are more rich than I could ever freaking imagine. And they be happy as heck in every interview. Or look at Stephen Curry and Klay Thompson. They're two famous NBA players who pull more women than I could ever freaking imagine. And they also be happy as heck in every interview. You'll oftentimes see these two duos cheesing whenever they see each other. Both of these duos are two sets of friends whose chemistry together ended up making them millions of dollars. Well, the same bond of a dynamic duo that was getting rich together was also present in YouTube basketball with the YouTubers Cash Nasty and Nick Briz. Cash Nasty has a channel of over 4 million subscribers, and Nick Briz has a channel of over 600,000. Cash Nasty reacted to all of Nick's streetball videos, and these reactions would earn Cash Nasty thousands of dollars every time. However, this mutually benefited Nick as well, because given that Cash had a much larger audience than Nick, the exposure of Cash's reactions directly translated to Nick getting thousands of dollars as well. Throughout the entirety of their friendship's lifespan, they probably generated hundreds of thousands of dollars for each other in less than a year time span. Don't quote me on that number, I'm not trying to pocket watch, but this is just an approximation given that Nick stated that he was making $40,000 a month at one point. But this approximation is important so you can understand how strong of a bond these two had. Imagine you made hundreds of thousands of dollars with somebody, you'd probably be calling them your brother. A large source of both of their incomes directly came from their business relationship with each other, and Nick even states that Cash changed his life entirely. So, throughout the past year, Nick was very appreciative of everything Cash did for him, and Cash was very proud of the success Nick was achieving. This formed an extremely strong friendship, and Cash even became a mentor for Nick. They even exchanged changed numbers, and they started doing collaborations in real life. Everything seemed to be going amazing between them, and they just looked like two friends in business who greatly appreciated each other. Well, that is, until Nick did something unthinkable. And within seconds, this life-changing bond completely fell apart. So, how did this happen? How did these two YouTubers, who come from completely different backgrounds, become such strong friends? And what could have possibly happened that broke this bond to the point where we have Cash blocking all contact with Nick and removing himself from Nick entirely? I'm just not gonna affiliate myself with him no more, block a text, you know, I haven't responded to him in three days because I just waiting on a real apology. And we have Nick dedicating entire sections of his streetball videos, screaming at Cash, saying he has nothing to apologize for. Cash Nasty, you know I love you, bro, and I would never put you in a situation to hurt you or to harm you, and I think it's pretty f***ed up that you didn't even say nothing to me, bro. Well, that's exactly what we're gonna document in this video. This is the story of Nick Briz versus Cash Nasty. Friends fall apart. Put it on my soul, don't want no end outs, I'll do it on my own Trouble as a team, skipping class like they songs I get down to my last, then I'm running in your own Mine's blowing up my phone, trying to see where I'm at 
All right, y'all, so before we get into this video, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and turn on post notifications. We're on the road to 20K subscribers right now, and I really think that we can hit it soon. Also, follow my Instagram, at DocUpYT. We actually just got co-signed by both Nick Briz and Devontae Friga, so pretty much the whole streetball industry is watching us now. Don't worry, I'm not gonna switch up because of this. I just thought it was dope and I wanted to share it with y'all. We're on the road to 1K followers on there, so if y'all could check it out, that would be dope. I also recently just hired some help with researching these videos from fellow YouTuber Chris of the Wrist. So from now on, his credit is gonna be in the description. He really helps me out researching these videos, which really goes a long way considering, you know, I'm literally just a dude. Like, I have a job, I go to college. So having some help really just helps me be more productive. So go check him out. His link is gonna be in the description for all videos that he helps with. And let me run my disclaimer real quick so don't get pushed off a cliff in the comment section. All information I stated in this video is from YouTube videos and articles that I gathered online. Do not take what I stated in this video as law. I am literally just a dude. So obviously it would be impossible for me to know everything that's going on behind the scenes. I just try my absolute best to put all the pieces together based on what's pushed out to the public. And without further ado, let's get into the video. As usual, I'm going to start by introducing the main people we're going to be talking about in this beef. First, being Cash Nasty. Cash Nasty is a YouTuber with over 6 million subscribers across all of his channels. He's also a member of the YouTube content creator group, 2Hype. Cash Nasty makes videos on many varieties of content, ranging from real life basketball all the way to cooking. Cash is one of the most famous personalities in the sports YouTube space. He's known to be a solid dude who's just about paying his bills and being overly confident when he gets to the top of the key in basketball for absolutely no reason at all. He's also from the hood of Louisiana, so he really doesn't play when people try to come at him. I'm only stating that because this is going to be really important for the rest of the video. I'm also stating that because I'm from the suburbs and I could be extremely naive to danger, whereas Cash is probably more on game when it comes to recognizing and responding to violent situations. As well as his main channel that has over 4 million subscribers. He also has a second channel where he reacts to the most entertaining videos that his subscribers send him. This reaction channel has 2 million subscribers on its own, and many of its videos get millions of views, oftentimes getting more views than the original videos themselves. So the exposure of having the co-sign by Cash Nasty actually has the power of changing somebody's life. Because Cash loves basketball, he's always looking for new basketball creators to react to. One of these creators ended up being Nick Briz, and he's the next person we're going to be introducing. Nick Briz is a YouTuber with over 600,000 subscribers. He also formed and is the leader of a streetball team called the Savage Squad. This team is known to just get into fights with everybody they play against. For the past year, he's been arguably the most popular streetball player in the industry. Cash Nasty reacted to Nick's videos ever since Nick was only at around 100,000 subscribers, and almost every single one of Nick's videos that he posted that year has now reached a million views. However, this million views wasn't because Nick was a generational basketball talent. No shade I'm not no generational talent either, but I'm just being real. The majority of people actually watch Nick's videos because so many fights happened in the games. Nick and his Savage Squad fought and trash talked almost everyone who came on the court against them. And these fights got so bad and so often that some people either thought that Nick's videos were fake or they thought that he was going to end up getting shot. Recently, one of Nick's teammates exposed that Nick's videos were in fact fake. However, allegedly, nobody but Nick knew that the videos were being faked. Meaning that Nick was hiring people to fight him and his teammates without his teammates actually knowing. This exposing absolutely set the streetball community on fire because this went beyond just YouTube content. According to Chris, the teammate who added Nick, Nick was actually putting lives in danger. And at one point, Nick actually put a hit on Cash Nasty, the same dude who had become his close friend, causing the beef that you're going to see in this video. What I just told you is a summarized version of everything you need to know about these two past friends before I get into their entire timeline. So now that you know their backgrounds, grab some popcorn, find somewhere comfortable to sit at, and watch this story unfold. It all started January 31st, 2021. Nick posts a video of him playing streetball that he recorded on a toaster oven. He's also starting to get his first sense of a buzz on the YouTube scene. So much so that Cash's fans start telling Cash that there's a new hooper on the block that he needs to react to. He doesn't really know Nick that well at this point, but he gives him a chance. After watching the video for a little bit, he tells his fans that Nick deserves more love. He also tells Nick to get a better camera. This is a white dude. Yes, I say I'm not being racist. I can't be real. When we see white people with ups, we all like, Lit runs out here in Tampa. Came out here and going crazy. About to play some pickup. Like, ooh, that jump. Where they go? Oh, no, no, I'm not going to Yeah, I like that, Nick. I like that. That man just pushing on me, bro. Like, come on, man. Yeah, stand up for yourself, bro. You right. Da da da! You! Nick, keep doing your thing. Check out his video down below in the description, bro. He deserves so much more love. But you also need to up that quiet, bro. 480p, man. You're 2021, bro. This ain't 1920, bro. Bruh. February 24th, 2021. Nick does a special event where he plays for the streetball organization Ball's Life. Ball's Life, a channel that's completely separate than Nick, posts this video on their channel and Cash reacts to it. He roasts Nick for a little bit, then he starts giving Nick his props. Guy here name is Nick Briz, man. He's like the uh, typical skateboarder. This dude be dunking on people. 
This guy gets some exposure finally. And he trash talk, and I like that. And that boy be, bro, he be gravitating, bro. Fast forward about a month or so, and Nick is still pushing out great content. He still hasn't really blown up yet though, and his videos are just starting to break 100,000 views. Keep in mind, at this point in time, Cash and Nick still don't really know each other in person, at least to my knowledge. Cash reacts to the newest video Nick posted and is absolutely loving it. He even says that he wants to play with Nick in person, but is scared that he will get harmed. Remember he said this. <laughs> Already? Hey, chill out, What's bro. up, sir? Oh, Nick, do not fold. You gotta give him that respect. He do not fold, bro. Man, I wanna get a run in with Nick, man. I got to, man. I don't wanna fight, though, Nick. You know what I mean, bro? Like, I got too many sponsorships, man. I ain't trying to. Look. At the end of the video, he co signs Nick by saying that Nick is next to blow up in the community. And Nick, keep dropping these bangs right here, man. Make sure you guys genuinely go over there and show him love, bro. This dude right here, mark my words, bro. I think he's gonna be one of the guys that's gonna blow up, man. We keep continuing this content right here. This is different, man. We likes this, bro. I got my post notifications on for you, man. Do not disappoint me. Cash's reaction gets over a million views, and Nick's original video gets over a million views as well. If you don't already know how YouTube works, both of these dudes made thousands of dollars off of these videos. Cash quickly realizes that reacting to Nick's content can help him pay his bills, and Nick quickly realizes that Cash reacting to his videos is giving him exposure that can help him buy a better camera. All in all, it's a perfect benefit for both parties, and an unspoken friendship is beginning to form. All throughout May of 2021, Cash continues to push Nick heavily. Bills are being paid, dinner is getting served, and everything is going great between Cash and Nick. They're getting completely rich together. May 24th, 2021. Nick DMs Cash inviting him to go to Compton, one of the most dangerous hoods on the planet, to play basketball and talk trash to people. He thinks that this is going to be a good bonding activity and will make for some great content. Cash, having some street smarts, proceeds to say this. Man, Nick, look y'all, he caught my phone, right? Coming to California Compton. Compton! Compton. He told me to pull up and he said, I need a hood, Cash, come out. Hell no! Nah. I'm not going to come through with that type of shit. Yeah, I'm trying to bet that. With you, bro. I got it. After his idea gets completely cursed by Cash, Nick instead proposes that they should just play against each other instead. And Cash agrees that that sounds a lot better. June 3rd. 2021. Nick tells his fans that he has a special surprise coming when he hits 500,000 subscribers. Spoiler alert, but the surprise was that Savage Squad was going to be playing too hype. I got a special thing coming up, 500k subs, which should be in the next month. Subscribe to the channel. Let's go. June 12th. 2021. Cash promotes this game against Nick Freeze on his channel as well. Both Nick and Cash are pushing each other, and both of their channels are flourishing. In a couple of days, we actually gonna be linked, y'all. I don't know if we can do a 2v2 or whatever it is, y'all, but just expect uh, some type of collaboration between me and Nick. June 18th. 2021. Nick and Cash finally play against each other for the first time. It's an insanely even matchup filled with great plays on both sides. Okay, I'm completely lying right now. Nick's team absolutely destroyed Cash's team. Nick and Cash exchange competitive trash talk the entire time. Carlos, let Cash shoot anything he wants. Get back. Cash can't do shit with the ball. Go all the way back. He has no top of the key. What? And after the game is over, Nick and Cash dap it up, and Nick shows his appreciation to Cash Nasty for everything he's done for him. Hey, boy. Cash Nasty, come here. I love you. The next day, fans everywhere were flaming Cash for getting dropped off by Nick. Cash proceeds to tell everyone to get off his head. Leave me alone. I literally just came from the grocery store. Got some fresh squeezed orange juice. Somebody came asking me, bro, you good? We're out with the Nick Brent situation. All my DMs are being flooded. My mom even texting me, man. Leave me alone about this damn game. Nick comments on the video saying, quote unquote, I love you, Cash. They're obviously still good friends, and this whole game was all in good fun. June 20th. 2021. The next day, Cash posts a rematch that he had against Nick and his Savage Squad teammate, Carlos. And Cash actually wins. After the game, they dap each other up, and Cash tells his fans to go check out Nick's video. Hey, I bet y'all won't play me 2v2 though. I bet you won't play me 2v2 though. Man, make sure you check out Nick's channel down below. He uploaded a 5v5 2 hype. Make sure I check it out, bro. Show love, bro. July 28th. 2021. This is low key where you see Nick start to get carried away, and the seeds of what caused everything to fall apart start getting planted. A humongous brawl broke out in the game he posted this day, and Nick says that if fights happen more and more, he'll have to change how he goes about his content. But you don't know who has what, and you don't know what anyone out there is gonna do. So I'm out there trying to solve everything. Hey, chill out. Hey, let's keep it basketball. Let's handle it on the court. As you guys could clearly see, couldn't really be handled. Nothing I really could do out there, man. But if it happens more and more, I'm gonna have to chill on the way I go about my content. August 22nd. 2021. Nick says that when he hits 600,000 subscribers, he wants to rematch Cash Nasty and 2 Hype again. He also says that the Savage Squad, which is his team he's the leader of, is never falling apart. This really did not age that well. 600k, man, we're almost there. 2 Hype, I know you're shaking. Rematch time. Savage Squad is on top and we're not going anywhere. We're here to stay. We're here forever. We're never separating. We're never leaving. I know you guys don't like that. This is ours. 
August 27th, 2021. Nick, Carlos, and Cash all hop on Instagram live together in Miami. They obviously have a good bond going and they're just smiling. They're chilling, living life, knowing that they're making more than OnlyFans models. August 29th, 2021. Nick decides to invite Cash to play a 5v5 game with the rest of his Savage Squad. Cash agrees, but Nick has no open spots. So Nick decides to substitute Cash in for his Savage Squad teammate, Iman. Instead of hooping with the rest of the team, Iman stays in his car puts his hoodie on, and smokes a blunt without saying a word, while Cash takes his spot. Cash and Nick proceed to do their thing on the basketball court, and their chemistry is obviously showing. However, during this game, pay attention to this little short dude with the beard starting problems. You might notice that he's a little more aggravated than everyone else on the court. Just keep that in mind. Yeah, feed me, man. Feed me. Feed me. Feed me. No. All in all, they play together, Nick's team wins, and both Nick and Cash walk away with thousands of dollars each. Cash doesn't suspect anything, Nick isn't being shady towards anything, and everything seems like it's going perfect between them. Well, as you're soon to find out, that couldn't be more wrong. Fast forward to the infamous September 20th, 2021. Chris leaves the team, tons of accusations are made, and the Savage Squad completely falls apart. I'm not gonna go over everything that happened this day for the sake of time, but I have the video on the screen if you wanna watch it. But regarding this storyline of Nick and Cash, one of the accusations made was that in the video where Nick and Cash teamed up that you just saw, Nick actually hired somebody to hurt Cash just so it would make better content for the video, and that somebody was that little short dude. I'm just gonna let Chris explain it because it's way more dramatic. There was a situation where Nick and Cash were involved in something. What's that? What I like this, he tried to set Cash up. On some weasel shit for content, bro. That's the thing, he doesn't care what he does. He doesn't give a fuck who he hurts. He doesn't care about Carlos. He doesn't care about Chauncey. He doesn't even care about his cameraman. As long as he gets content. He's like a content whore. He'll do anything. Cash is in absolute shock. He feels absolutely betrayed by someone he called a friend, and he proceeds to wait three days for an apology or an explanation of some kind from Nick. In these three days, Nick texts Cash multiple times trying to apologize, but Cash feels that Nick is just beating around the bush. Cash feels as if Nick's apology isn't really genuine, and instead of responding to Nick on the phone, he drops an entire video responding to the whole situation. He's obviously extremely sad and disappointed. We had a deeper connection, you know, outside the net. I would've never thought of all people this would come from him. You know, I always want to help in hand to him, bro, you know? That shit really hurt me, Nick. I waited three days for him to just come out with a serious apology. I ain't gonna say that he didn't hit me up and didn't say my bad, I'm starting like that, bro, but the apologies were beating around the bush. It wasn't him taking accountability. I could respect the fact if he said, yo, you know what, Cash, bro? I done this right here, my bad, bro. I got caught in a moment, you know, I got caught in a YouTube algorithm getting clicks or whatever it is. I would've forgave him. I would've never forgot it. I waited three days, y'all. He sent me a text. Whatever, man, good luck making your bread. I'll create videos, no problem. I'm on a 20 that paid you, my pleasure. I don't know how to take that. You know, I don't know if that was the 20 dollars that you paid to do to swing on me and he didn't. I, I don't know. That shit hurt me, bro. Percy, he'll call me face on cash and nothing gonna happen, bro. Let's link, you know, and all the things right here. And to find out that dude receipts, bro, I DM the guy that he paid. You know, little short guy. You know, like the dude who shoved me, and he showed me text messages. Before the game, we gotta look at my reaction. I'm like, bro, I don't understand why that dude even done that. Before the game, like, bro, I'm a big fan, you know, can we get a picture after the game and things like that? I, I, I couldn't believe it. So, apparently the dude of anger issues was actually a fan of Cash. A fan of Cash's back in the day was hired to hurt him in a streetball game and almost did it. And probably would have swung on him if he wasn't a fan. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. You know, but I just played with it like, okay, you know, the camera's on, I guess the energy high. What if the dude wasn't a supporter or fan? What if the dude really had hate? You don't know how much you put me at risk, how much I'm jeopardizing. That dude would have swung, bro. Like, I, I would have blacked out for some clicks, bro. We're on phone call too. We're going to make sure nothing happened to you, bro. 
I got your back. If it they have, bro, you know, and when Chris sent me that text message, bro, I couldn't believe it. Like I said, I waited three days. I did my research. I hit the dude up personally. I look at the old DMs, you know, from the guy. Cats was inspired by you. Thank you so much. It's a fucked up situation, bro. It's, it shit lit, left me hurt, bro. Didn't expect it from him, man. Didn't even get a real man apology. And I think only for like $100. $100? That shit hurt the fact that I would use a pawn in a video for clicks, bro. Like, could you came to me straight up, bro? I would have respected that way more than I'm sorry, you know, but don't believe the things what Chris saying or the internet saying. Bro, I got receipts, bro, of the, the dude literally you paid for, bro. Press him hard, bro. Should be trying to fight. The dude in the video was like, yeah, I feel you. I know where you're coming from, I got you. Man, you got to stir him up. Tell Cash he sucks. Bro, I slide you $100 minimum. If you go above and beyond with entertainment, I slide you more. And he wanted me to swing, but there was no reason for that. Crazy, right? Feel backstab. Just be honest with y'all. I'm just not gonna affiliate myself with him no more. I'm gonna follow him. I'm gonna block the text. You know, I haven't responded to him in three days. I just waiting on a, you know, a real apology. And uh, yeah. All in all, he says that he's blocking contact with Nick entirely and that he's done co signing it. The whole entire Streetball community is on Cash's side, and Nick immediately becomes the enemy number one. Nick has so much on his plate with everything crashing down around him that he doesn't respond to the Cash situation at all on social media for over a week. Instead, he grabs his remaining Savage Squad team members and flies over to Puerto Rico to film another Streetball video. Nick posts his Puerto Rico Streetball video on YouTube as if nothing's going on. The video is extremely entertaining and some dope plays happen. However, the fans are still mad at Nick, so they absolutely massacre his dislike button, getting over 20,000 dislikes at the time of this recording. This is the most disliked video Nick has ever posted. Nick also lost 20,000 subscribers overnight. By the fact that Nick hadn't responded to Cash on social media yet, you would think that he was just trying to leave the whole situation alone. Well, that is, until you reach the end of this video. At the end of this video, Nick throws in a small two minute clip of him talking about Cash. You can tell he's pretty shaken up by everything that's going on. Nick knows that Cash has blocked him on all other forms of social media, and so he proceeds to put his heart and soul into his message, hoping that Cash sees it. For Cash Nasty, man, Cash, all we were doing, bro, was a content dang, dog. All we wanted to do was enhance the content to take you and put you into an environment that we're constantly in. Cash Nasty, you know I love you, bro, and I would never put you in a situation to hurt you or to harm you and I think it's pretty fucked up that you didn't even say nothing to me bro you ran to the internet while I'm being accused of 50,000 different bullshit things I had no idea what to come to you and speak to you about bro and if you would have told me as a man this is what's being said this is what's being talked about when you don't even know what me and Chris talked about on the phone all the different scenarios he put in my mind I put in his mind that we put in each other's minds to enhance the content you didn't say nothing to me bro instead you took someone's bullshit word and you ran to YouTube, you ran to the internet, and you tried to put everything against me just as everyone else has been doing. If you would have approached me as a man and say, yo, Nick, this is what's being said. This is what's being done. What's up? Then I would have told you, bro, yeah, I got a little peanut head, the smallest dude on the court, to come mess with you, to enhance the content. You know I don't want to hurt you. You know I'd never try to get you hurt. You know I'd never do nothing to put you in danger, bro. At the end of the day, man, this is YouTube, dog. This is content, man. That's all it is, bro. I didn't hire no one to take you out in life. This is stuff being filmed on a camera where you got everybody around to protect you and help you and you can, bro. No one tried to hurt you, dog. You know I fucking love you, bro. All you had to do was come talk to me, bro. And ask me what was good, bro. Instead of you had to run to YouTube where you know it would do numbers. You know you would make money. So I get it. I understand why you wouldn't say nothing to me, bro. But it's fucked up, dog. And because of that, I don't have a damn word to apologize about, man. I got nothing to say. This is YouTube. This is content on YouTube, bro. That's it, man. We gonna keep going. Say what you want. This is literally the YouTube equivalent of when like a couple has a messy breakup and one of the people blocks them and then the person that got broken up with is just like standing outside their house with like a sign talking about please take me back or I didn't mean it or whatever the heck. Literally the YouTube friendship equivalent of that. Just like a dude who just broke up with his toxic girlfriend, Cash Nasty never responds to this message at all. And at the time that I'm recording this video, it doesn't look like he ever will. Cash has completely dropped Nick as a friend and their tight bond pretty much overnight has completely been severed. We probably will never see another Cash reaction to a Nick Briz video again. And it seems like Cash is currently on the look for a different Hooper to co-sign and help him pay his bills. The whole world has turned their back on Nick and Cash wants nothing to do with him. It's a really sad story, I'm not even gonna lie. I guess this is just what happens though, when friends fall apart.
And this leads us to where we are now. Since this situation, Cash hasn't mentioned Nick's name once, and Nick has given up trying to contact Cash. At least to my knowledge. I honestly don't know how this is going to play out. I wonder if one day, maybe Nick and Cash will cross paths again and mend things between them. Or if they will forever just be in a beef. If I was Cash, I'd probably let Nick know that I'm just going to keep my distance from now on. And if I was Nick, I'd probably just be apologizing like crazy. This is an insane situation for real, but I wish the best for both parties. But that's just what I think. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Whose side are you on? Nick Briz or Cash Nasty? Also, what would you do if you were Cash in this situation? Would you cut Nick off and entirely or would you try to fix your friendship because you guys are already so strongly bonded if you like this video and want more content like this hit that subscribe button i feel like we can hit that 20k soon and follow my instagram at talkupyt thank you guys again for all the support on this channel i can't thank y'all enough and without further ado i'm out peace hey my mama blew a hundred thousand dollars in the 80s went back broke by the time that she had a baby try to teach me lessons on how to get money and save it but i ain't listen i had to show up in the latest 10th grade getting every jordan release like they was payless now i'm grown so it's foreign cars and diamonds to make them statements